Asociación de Cáñamo. Ha sido un proceso largo para nosotros como el INTA, no teníamos experiencia en este cultivo, sin embargo nos amoldamos a las condiciones que teníamos y con la ayuda de Daniel O'Brien, que está aquí presente y a la cual agradecemos mucho su colaboración, pudimos adaptar las condiciones que teníamos en cada estación para poder realizar la investigación. Como les digo, esto fue realizado bajo un convenio de cooperación mutua donde la empresa privada Rocoplans estuvo anuente a que todos los resultados que se generaran a través del INTA y de ellos fuera de dominio público. Esto nos permite tener los primeros resultados a nivel nacional y incursionar en este interesante cultivo. Entonces, ha sido un esfuerzo tanto de la parte gubernamental como nosotros de INTA, como de la empresa Rocoplans, con la colaboración del Ministerio de Agricultura y otras entidades. Aquí le agradezco mucho a Dan, él tiene mucho más experiencia en este cultivo y muy amablemente pues, nos ha ayudado, me ha enseñado mucho de este cultivo y pues, les agradezco todos estos meses de investigación mutua. Dan. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank everybody for being here. I might get a little emotional. I apologize ahead of time. It really means a lot to me. I've, I've worked really, really hard. Excuse me. Thank you. Thank you. I got into this because of my dad. My, my dad had a, uh, esophageal cancer, and <clears throat> I watched him suffer as he went through a lot of different medications and chemo and radiation. And the reality of it is that this plant made a huge difference in the quality of life that he had. So I really, really feel passionate to see all of your support, your interest, because this can make a huge difference for Costa Rican people. It really can. <clears throat> so let's get to some of the fun part about this because it's been a very interesting road getting here. As you know, politics uh, can also, also throw quite a few hills and, and bumps along the way. And uh, we've, we've had some interesting news articles come out. Uh, and the reality of it is, this is new. And there is no roadmap. There's no way to say this is the right way or the wrong way. And so we put all of our heart and efforts into doing all of the research and being able to show people what we can do with it. And it has nothing to do with just one chemical, THC. It has to do with what this plant can do to make materials, base materials that we can build all kinds of stuff from, from batteries to plastics to houses to cement. So I really applaud your effort to learn and to look at this as we move into a new opportunity for all of Costa Rica. Uh, there are lots of opportunities. We get demonized quite a bit for the, the, the medical marijuana side where the THC is what's focused on and it is helpful it needs to be tracked, it needs to be traced, but it should be available for everyone. And that's why I'm very excited to work in a country with open-mindedness and efforts into doing the right thing for, for its citizens. And so I'd like to run through a few of these things and show you some pictures of my journey along the way here. Um, this is pictures of when I was building the shipping container here in Costa Rica with just stuff that I could buy inside the country. Uh, and then our propagation domes as we had uh, our first sets of plants come in vitro. Um, There's a few of my partners and uh, Dr. Gowdy uh, working with the plants in vitro in the uh, Guapala station. Uh, here are the, oops, excuse me. Okay, we'll just stick with this and it doesn't want to go backwards. So uh, these are some of the plants uh, as seedlings in, in cups with drainage, uh, providing some supplemental lighting. Um, this country has a 12 to 12 and a half hour light cycle. And so that cycle is a normal flowering uh, time for a plant. And so you have to provide it with some supplemental light. 
As you can see, inside this greenhouse, we were using CFLs, which are compact fluorescent lighting, uh, to provide supplemental lights for the plants. And this provides us with a couple of different advantages. Uh, in the United States and other climates, they, they have to black out all of their greenhouses if they grow stuff indoors. And so using our natural sunlight, which we have quite a bit of here, being very close to the equator, we can focus on using our natural elements to grow this plant cheaper. Uh, and when I say cheaper, it's not a different quality. It's the fact that it's better because we can sun grow our plants. We can use our natural soils here. It gives us a lot of edge and opportunity. Our goals in this project was to educate, transfer the knowledge to all Costa Rican farmers. It was very important when we worked with uh, Maganita on this project to start that that was the purpose of this, was to give our research away for free. And so these are our preliminary findings. We are starting our last set of cultivar, and as soon as it's finished, we will be providing a link uh, directly through Maganita's website that will provide all of the unskewed data, a full sheets of what each plant was, what it grew, what happened to it, whether it was infected with any kind of uh, bug or a, a disease or a, a fungus or something like that. And it'll be able to show you guys exactly what germination rates and it'll follow all the way through the plants down to the end production rate. Now, understand in this project, this wasn't me picking up the phone and, and calling Hydro Farm and having them send two shipping containers worth of the latest equipment and technology to me. We had to prove the viability for what is here. And so we sourced inside the country and we're able to put, it up, put enough equipment together to do this based off of what is currently available. And what makes me very excited is if I can do this with almost nothing, imagine what everybody in this entire country can do with the latest and greatest technologies and experience and methods and equipment brought from around the world right here to Costa Rica. Thank you. During this project, we wanted to define and find viable hemp crops cultivars for this country. Originally, we've imported 12 sets. Uh, as I said, 11 have gone through the entire process. And we're going to be able to use that data to not only show you just individual cultivar cultivars, how they perform, but also the, the entire year, all the way through the, the light cycle at each location. What we are trying to do is establish a framework and a support system a test, track, and trace platform so that we can support with the government and how it can manage the system effectively and safely for all of its citizens. I'm a father and I'm very concerned with children getting a hold of stuff that they shouldn't get a hold of. And in a lot of countries, there's not a whole lot of regulations on products. And I think working with the health ministry along with the Ministry of Ag to be able to create a system where everybody can work together and can see the exact same test results live so this enables us to be able to move products safely and effectively. And if there is an issue with that product, it can be recalled immediately off shelves. So it's a lot similar to the way vegetables are, are in the United States with RFID tags and tracking barcodes is we can tell exactly where products are without the country and recall them if there's an issue. Here's a, a couple pictures of uh, some plants that uh, we've been working on. We've been trying different cultivation methods one of those methods, uh, which is definitely not strange here to Costa Rica, and that's the plastic culture. Um, what this does is this raises up the bed of dirt and then allows us to cover it with a plastic film and underneath that film, two drip tapes. Um, cannabis does not like to stand in water. It has a lot of root issues with rotting and fungus. So you have to provide adequate drainage. So it's important on row crops like this that we actually raise up the plants out of the bed. It allows for deeper penetration for the roots and healthier plants. We compared two side-by-side -side trials, two rows under plastic culture and two rows without, and it was an incredible difference on the, uh, the size and uh, the production of the plant. Um, we also grew inside a greenhouse with a 80-20 top and then screened in sides got a little bit of a funny story about a screened in greenhouse and you guys will probably get a kick out of this. Um, so we, uh, during the out throughout the year, there's a time of year that white flies get extremely bad, uh, especially when you're in areas with lots of other agriculture crops. And we had two sets of plants, one set outside and one set inside. And we started noticing that the plants on the outside were less affected by white flies than the plants on the inside of the greenhouse come to find out that the screen on the outside of the greenhouse was a little old and white flies were able to make it through the screen 
and none of the predatory natural bugs were able to make it through because they were larger. Therefore, essentially trapping the white flies and giving them a place to flourish inside a, a greenhouse with no predators. So there's a lot of technology and things that have been improved over the last 10 or 15 years when this greenhouse was put in and will definitely make a huge difference on production for plants inside greenhouses. The two lo lo locations that were originally selected by MAG and INTO was the tropical station in Guapolis and then the more dry and uh, region up in Costa Rica, close to Cañas, uh, at the Enrique Jimenez Experimental Station. That's currently where I'm still working. Um, we have a contract through June of 2022 to finish our cultivars and then provide our final report. And both locations are operated by Maganinta as experimental stations um, and have been absolutely wonderful places to work. I've enjoyed working with all of the different uh, employees and, and different uh, co-ops that have come through and uh, taken a look at what we're working on. Just a few more plants of or pictures of some plants and trays. Uh, in the climate, just looking at both of these from a distance. I'm just including a few graphs and this will be available uh, for download as well so you guys can go through it. It just compares the rainfall throughout the year, highest and lowest, also as well as temps, and then going through and looking at what types of the year you can see obviously the dry and the wet seasons. And so those cycles are very important when you're flowering and when you're vegetating plants. And so a lot of these graphs and data will be very important for local farmers to be able to look at their local climates and plan their humidity levels, temperatures, and rainfalls around crops. Um, this is another weather chart. Uh, this is in Kanyas. It shows the average temperatures as well as minimum maximums, percentage and humidity uh, overall on average. So you can kind of see the patterns as well through these charts exactly when the really wet season and dry season. And so that's gonna be able to help farmers participate and predict when they think crops are gonna need to be harvested due to weather. Another big thing that most people always ask me, why are we not growing up on the top of the mountains like you hear everywhere else? It has a lot to do with cloud cover. A lot of the higher elevation, elevation areas have really poor uh, sun penetration. And so you wind up with having to put extra supplemental lighting, which uh, again, at the end is a utility cost and it's quite high. And Costa Rica being such a environmentally friendly uh, country, I think it's very important to focus on using our sun and our natural elements as much as possible to predict where we can grow the best crops and be the most effective. It's the same data exactly for Guasimo and Guaypolis, this average rain rainfall. Same thing with the temperature. And you can start to see here why Guapolis and this area is not a very good area for flowering. If you look across at the humidity, you know, the lowest that you're gonna see is 82 and it says 92, but I think it was probably more like 100 when we were there. Uh, and that's definitely a problem for bud rot and for the flowering stages of these plants. Again, you can see light and cloud cover, and so you can see certain areas where it's just quite inadequate for, for growing crops outside. Our overall process for this, we selected and, and imported genetics. We focused more on some of the oil production plants and just a few on the fiber plants, um, and we're gonna continue to take this data and break it down and look at it and see exactly what type of crops perform better in different areas to bring, make more recommendations and bring more cultivars into Costa Rica to be able to use. So after that, we planted seeds and we used, implemented local uh, Costa Rican tradition and farming techniques by using the plastic culture that was here, using raised rows, things that the, the farm was well equipped with implements already and techniques were already known by uh, the help. Um, we observe, obs the observation and monitoring during the entire growth cycle. So we photographed, we logged all of the plants through its vegetation, as well as its seedling, and then onto its flowering stage. Every single plant was tracked and tagged with an individual number, and every plant was dried and weighed individually, and then hand um, decorrugated and pulled apart, and then placed into buckets for weight. <clears throat> we had uh, a couple different uh, growing style types. So I grew inside a container in fabric bags so that I could provide uh, uh, stable climate control and we were able to control humidity, temperature, as well as all the lighting through the entire cycle. We also used various types of lighting. So through the seedling stage, we used um, fluorescent lights uh, and low uh, <clears throat> temperature, excuse me. 
And then through the final stages of the vegetation mode for supplemental light, we use complex fluorescence through the entire greenhouse. And then inside the container, we use uh, LED lights. I'll post all of the models, the makes, and every information on all the equipment that was used in the study, as well, along with my research, so that people can see what temperature lighting and uh, different uh, times that we used. We also used uh, different types of nutrients. Uh, Costa Rica produces quite a bit of sugarcane, and so one of the things that we started looking at was uh, using the leftover molasses from some of the sugarcane production and using those essential sugars and nutrients into starting plants in their, their, their young stages. After that, we used uh, a product that's registered and found here in Costa Rica. It's uh, Technoflora. They make an entire line of uh, products that can be found in-country um, from the vegetation seedling state all the way through vegetation and flowering with a lot of particular nutrients, too, that you can focus. Uh, we looked at different various soil types, um, several different types of soils that were found in country, as well as looking at different additives and cocoa choir and perlite and stuff like that. It's a picture of uh, some of the first in vitro plants in gel and then one of the leaves that came off of uh, the hemp cultivars here. So again, I talked about the growing methods, uh, indoor, completely controlled. Uh, we were able to monitor it 24 hours a day uh, outdoor in an open field process, just looking to see what natural pests and natural predators would uh, acquire or accumulate on the plants. And then we use a greenhouse, a screening greenhouse for targeted crops, something where you can go through and really control um, the environments a little bit more. The different types of lighting that were used, CFL, uh, LED, and then just fluorescent. Soils that were used in the process, the perlite and cocoa choir as additives, Here's a picture of the Technoflora nutrients. This is their entire line. One of the interesting things here is, is getting to learn the natural pests in this country. Um, I've had a couple experiences where I had to go up to the greenhouse in the middle of the night and chase down leaf cutter ants that completely cut down entire plants. Um, we've also had quite a bit of different issues with um, different pests and destroying and cutting tubes and infecting plants. Um, it's just part of the process and getting to really look at this and, and observe what's happening already here can help us prepare for what you guys are going to experience as farmers in this process. And so it allows us to take this data, look through it, look and see what kind of solutions are out there already, adapt those to Costa Rica to be able to make everybody here more successful in, in what their quest is. So in our preliminary findings for the conclusion for today, we have identified successful cultivars that can be grown in this country that are very f effective for production for oil, for terpenes, and for fiber, as well as seed. We've applied local farming techniques that were also successful. And so what that tells me is that there is an able workforce and farming community here that can support this industry. We also modified some of the existing techniques to improve them and are gonna continue to work with that with tools and implements and companies from around the world that have already had time to, to use this and, and, and figure it out. We've identified soils, pests, fungal challenges, and all of those we're currently reviewing for solutions. And at the end of this entire program, when we're finished, all of this will be published. We use the lab with uh, Mag and Inta for them to qualify and go through and study all of the issues that we've had. And so we'll attach those findings along with all of our data to be able to supply to you guys. And we have one last cultivar, and as soon as that's finished, um, what we would like to do is publish our results. I, everybody that's in this place, we have your email, you are one of our members. What I would like to do is quarterly send out an email to you, letting you know what's happening, letting you know where we're at in the process, keeping you updated, and also keeping you inspired. Is there any other uh, thing? I think, uh, I think I've covered it.
Vamos a cambiar el tema de la 